We are back once again. I'm Tim with Golf Car Garage. I am a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer here at Golf Car Garage. Gearheads On Demand is a service where you can call and schedule an appointment and I will call you uh, to talk about golf cart related issues. I probably have run into it. Whatever your problem is, I've probably run into it in the past. Uh, you can also schedule a, you can schedule a phone call or you can schedule a video session with me where I can take control of the camera in your phone and I can see what you're pointing at if it's something that you need to, you, you think that I need to see in order to be able to help you. Uh, sometimes that's necessary, sometimes it's not. Phone call sometimes will do, do, do just as good, but sometimes a video can help. So anyway, this is a Thursday, May the 12th. We are live once again on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. We got all those issues worked out with the YouTube channel. We're back up and running 100%. So we come here every week. I go over some questions that we get at Golf Cart Garage. We get lots of questions. I go over, try to answer some people's questions, try to save them some money. So since the garage is now open, let's get started. We'll get started with the questions. Oh, and anybody in the live chat, feel free to ask a question. I'll check on you here in a minute. This is uh, number one. I have an EasyGo TXT and I'm having issues with the accelerator. It works fine when I press the pedal a little, but if I press it further for more power, it cuts out and slows down. I have replaced the throttle control, solenoid, and speed control, but still have the problem. What else could be the problem? Okay. My first, two things, two things I have a question about right off the bat. You said you replaced the throttle control and in, a, in an EasyGo TXT, the throttle control is called the ITS, it stands for Inductive Throttle Sensor. Uh, that's what EasyGo TXTs use. Now, my first question would be where did the, where did the ITS come from? because I know there's a lot of, of uh, very, very inexpensive ones out there on Amazon. There's the, there, the price can range from $25 to $100 to $200 for an ITS. So that throws up a red flag right there anytime I see the same product and the, and the price range can be so drastically different. So I have questions about that because your symptom is a symptom of the ITS sending a bad signal to the controller. It is a symptom of that. So that would be the first thing that I wanted to clear up. The second thing, I don't know if you notice this or not, but there's a wiring harness, a small wiring harness leaving the ITS box. The ITS box is under the floor mat. There's a small wiring harness leaving the ITS box and it goes to a plug that plugs in between the ITS and the controller. I have had trouble in the past with those plugs becoming corroded or uh, getting water in them and I've ended up having to bypass around the plug. I have to, to cut the wire and bypass around that little plug. So that would be the two places that I would be suspicious of right off the bat. Because like I said, your symptom that you're describing is of, the, of an ITS symptom, an ITS going bad. Okay, let's see, number two. Club Car XRT800E. The yellow battery light comes on and goes off periodically. I read where this may mean the attenuator is bad. Is that true? Do you have what I need to fix this? Okay, that uh, that that light is not necessarily called a battery light. I know it's got a picture of a battery on it. It, it comes on for a couple of reasons. One of them, it will come on for low voltage. So if you're sure your batteries are good, your voltage is good, your voltage is, is plenty, your batteries are fine, then it's not coming on for that, it's coming on for another reason. It, it also comes on for if your charge cycle was interrupted, like the last time you that you charged your car, if the electricity went out and you didn't know it, or electricity blinked and you didn't know it, you go back out to your car and that light will be coming on periodically to let you know that your charge cycle was interrupted and it has not gone through a full charge cycle. That will clear itself after it goes through a full charge cycle, like the next time, or you just drive the car and then charge it, you know, like normal. And if it goes through a full charge cycle without being interrupted again, that light will clear itself. Okay, Let's see number three. Would the switch under the floorboard on the accelerator cause my cart to surge in speed? 
Uh, well, not the switch, you mean. I don't know if you're wording that uh, different than I would or not, because golf carts have the, it's, a, it's the potentiometer that would cause the surge in speed. The switch is only to click your solenoid, but the potentiometer, if, I mean, if, if it's depending on what year and make a, your card is, the switch you're talking about is either inside the potentiometer sealed up like in a club car, or it's in the ITS box like in an easy go, or it's inside of a sealed unit called an M core for club cars. So there's a switch in there that clicks the accelerator pedal, but it's the potentiometer itself that's causing the surge. So depending on which car you have is what it, I would have questions about there. Let's see, number four. This is from Kevin. Charger in charge at five amps, not zero. All battery connections have been cleaned and inspected. Was charging fine. It was sitting for three months. Well, like I've said many times, I know I keep some of these, I re, end up repeating myself a lot. I realize that because some of these questions uh, are the, it's always goes back to the first thing I want to eliminate is, is the batteries. I want to eliminate the batteries as being the problem. Uh, I would have questions about how long did you let it charge on five amps before you gave up? I mean, because it could take 16 hours for a, a, a golf cart to charge before the battery, before the charger shuts off. You said your, your cart set for three months. That throws up a red flag there too about your batteries to me. So that's why I would have battery questions and need battery voltage readings on each one of your batteries. Uh, it may, you may, it may clear itself out too. Uh, what happens is when batteries sit for long periods of time, they, their condition changes. Not only does the voltage go down, but the con condition inside the batteries change. They sulfate. And then if you continue to charge it and use the cart, if you do it on a regular basis, you may be able to get all that to come back correctly. So it might just be a matter of you driving your car right a while and charging it too, making sure you charge it on a regular basis. And that may, that may fix your issue there also. But I would have questions about voltages right off the bat. Number five, my club car serial number is AG89, and that's all you need to know in a club car serial number is the first two letters and the first two numbers to know the, to know what year the car is. And so, he's, like he says, it's a 1989 car. Okay, it has a Kohler 10 horsepower gas motor, and I'm not giving spark to the spark plug. I remember speaking with this man this week. We we held. We had a long discussion on what he had done and what he had been, what he had gone through. And the next thing that he was going to do, he was just going to replace the coil. He had not, he had not replaced the coil yet. He had checked, uh, you know, and, uh, he had checked everything else and everything seemed to be fine. Um, but the, the coil was the next thing on the list. So that's what he was going to do in that case. Number six, I own a 2016. Club car precedent. New batteries were installed in December of 2021. All of a sudden, there is an occasional clicking sound when enabling the rocker switch. The cart hesitates to engage for a few seconds after that, or either backing up or going forward. Recently, I've noticed that when I charge the batteries and wait for the flashing light on the charger to stop blinking, I disconnect and immediately plug it in again, and the battery charger runs for a couple of hours again. Do you think this could be a dead cell, or is one of the batteries more likely another electrical issue? Okay, well, let's, I'm going to take this one, and it's a two-part question here. So, the occasional clicking sound when enabling the rocker switch, uh, the, that would tell me that the, the solenoid activation circuit is closed. So, you got to make sure that your foot's not on the accelerator pedal when you're when you're enabling the rocking the rocker switch. First of all, make sure you you don't have a floor mat that's in, interfering with your accelerator pedal uh, because that can that can cause that that symptom there. It says that, but I noticed when I wait for the flashing light on the charger to stop blinking, I disconnect the charger and immediately plug it in again, and the charger runs for a couple of hours again. All right, now that question there. That's actually normal operation. You could that that would be the case on any golf cart that had a automatic shut off charger. 
that even if your car is fully charged and you unplug the charger and plug it back in, that charger is going to run for at least an hour or so, even, even though you know your car is fully charged. That's normal operation. It takes a little time for the charger to figure out the, what condition your battery pack is in. Now, it'll drop really quickly and it will shut off you know, fairly quickly, but it, it, it would be normal for it to run an hour or maybe even two hours before it shuts off, even on a fully charged pack. Okay, let's see. Let's check to see. I'm going to check Facebook real quick, YouTube real quick. Got Israel Chavez in the chat on YouTube. What's up, Israel Chavez? And let's see. Anybody else in the live chat put something in there? Say, just say what's up. Let's see. Number seven. I have a 2016 Yamaha G29 and it's swaying a lot when I go 15 miles per hour. It's worse with people on the back. It's lifted. What can I do to fix this or is there a, way, a sway bar I can put on it? Uh, well, believe it or not, Yamaha's already have a sway bar. G29 already has a sway bar. So a lot of times when you lift a Yamaha, because they don't have leaf springs in the rear, they, they rely on coilover shocks. Uh, a lot of, I've had, heard a lot of customers complain that when they lift their Yamaha that it's kind of top heavy and it sways back and forth real easily. Well, it's something to do with the different design because of the no leaf spring issue in the, in the rear. So that's why they make heavy duty coilover springs. You can get a whole shock with a new heavy duty coil over on it, or you can remove the coil off of your existing shocks and put a heavy duty coil on it. Let's see. Number eight, I have a Club Car DS 2001 electric 48. I have a six inch lift with 23 inch tire stock motor. Very sluggish when going up paved hills in the neighborhood. What's the best way to go about getting more out of the car? What setup would you recommend? Oh, uh, you have you have several you have several options available to you. I don't I don't like it when people put 23 inch tires on stock electronics in an electric golf cart. That if especially if you have a hilly neighborhood that's never going to work out because those 23 inch tires are going to rob you of some power they're going to rob you of some torque and obviously you're finding that out now so they we have on our site on at golfcartgarage.com we have uh we have combo kits uh that have that include the motor include the controller include a heavy duty solenoid you could go look at the combo kits because in the description of the different combo kits that we offer, it's going to have one specifically for your car, first of all, for, for your year club car. And it's also, the combo kit itself also tells you the percentage of increase in performance that you can expect. Like it will tell you the percentage increase in speed. It will tell you the percentage increase in torque. Uh, so you could pick out the one that you think would best suit your needs. Okay, let's see, number nine. It's a club car. When you push on the accelerator pedal, it jerks like it's not getting the power it needs. The batteries are charged. Um, I guess I would ask you, would you describe the jerk? What do you mean it jerks? Would you describe it as a shutter or a stutter? Like does it go you know, like a machine gun kind of thing going on? Because if anytime, anytime someone describes a, a shutter or a stutter, it's usually 90 something percent of the time, it's a battery related issue. Now it doesn't necessarily mean battery when I say battery related. It could be a battery cable that's loose, a battery corrosion spot on one of the cables that's corroded, that, that's intermittent. Uh, if you've got a mechanical forward and reverse switch, it could be one of those cables that goes th that is connected to your forward and reverse switch because all your power goes through every one of those cables. And if they, if any of them ever got loose and be and became hot, you could start to lose connection over time, and it would just get worse and worse and worse. And eventually, your cart will stutter or shudder. So I would want to check all that out first and see if it's uh, and eliminate the batteries as, as being an issue first and then look for a battery related issue in any of the obvious connection points.
number 10, a gas 1997 TXT backfires every now and then. Also put new plugs in it. One cylinder looks nice and silver on the top of the piston. The other cylinder looks black. What do you think my problem is? Hmm, I, I don't know. It could be... I, I remember speaking with this guy this week. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I do remember. We, we talked about this and it could be an intermittent firing issue. If you got one clean piston and one one black piston, well obviously that's where your backfiring was coming from. You're not burning up air all the fuel on where that black piston cylinder was. So it could we decided it was a could be an intermittent firing issue uh, on on that black cylinder. So the 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 thing to do there, if you're sure your float's not stuck in your carburetor, because if your float is stuck and it's allowing gas to pour in there, then it's not going to be anything to do with the firing. It's just the fact that you're getting get your gas is flowing in there after when you let off the pedal, the butterfly valve's not shutting all the way. So if it's not a stuck float in the in the carburetor, then it could be an intermittent firing issue in the coil. So you'd replace the coil in that case. All right. Let's see here. Number 11 is from Patrick. Patrick says, Hi Tim, I have a 2017 EasyGo TXT 40A and would like to upgrade to a Navita speed controller with the Bluetooth to get more speed. Which model would you recommend? I'm planning on installing it myself. Well, that's no problem, Patrick. The Navita, there's a there's a Navitas controller specifically for your cart. Uh, you can there's there's two different amperage of them. There's a 440 amp and there's a six, uh, 600 amp. That would just depend on you, whichever one you, th you thought you wanted, depending on what your application may be. You may want to get the 600 if you're planning on lifting this car, putting tall tires or something like that on it. Unfortunately, both of them are out of stock on our website right now. Uh, but that would there's a 400. 440, 440 amp and a 600 amp. So check with our website before, if you decide to get one, check with our operators because uh, they're, they're a lot more up to date on what is out of stock and maybe even delivery times uh, than I am on that, on that kind of stuff. So just call up Golf Cart Garage uh, and check, check with any of the live operators and they'll be able to tell you they may have an ETA on uh, coming back in stock or maybe by the time you call it may already be back in stock. Number 12 is from Daniel. Hi Tim, I have a Columbia Park car. It goes well on the flats but really slows down going up hills. What can I do to improve uphill speed? Cart does 20 miles per hour on level ground but drops down to 5 on steeper hills. <laughs> 20 on flat and dropping to 5 on steeper hills, that is a really really drastic change uh, if we're talking about just normal heels that's a drastic change so I would be suspicious that you had a battery that was weak you got it you could have it you could have something as simple as just one cell in one of your batteries could be weak and dropping out in other words your voltage is going down so far when you hit that heel but when you get back on the flats it kind of it's, it's, it picks back up because you're not putting it as, a, as much under a strain as you are when you hit that heel so uh, just like I said before, I would want to. I'd want to check battery voltages when you hit the hill. In other words, have your voltmeter connected to your battery pack while you're riding on the flat ground, going 20 miles an hour or whatever. Watch your voltage there, and then when you hit that hill, watch your voltage. And if you see it just dramatically go down, then you know it's a battery-related issue. Then you can start finding which one. You can take your voltmeter off your entire pack and start going to each battery. Put it on each individual battery and go hit that hill again. And you're going to look for one. You're going to look for every which battery drops down in voltage way more than the others do. Way more than the other five. If you got six batteries in your car, or if you got four batteries, way more than the other three. Thirteen. Well, let me check over here real quick. I'm on YouTube. We got Roger Gregory. What's up, Roger? Let's see, how low should your battery voltage go while you're driving on a full charge? 
Uh, okay, well, I'm going to take this first question. You're driving around on a full charge. Your battery voltage is going to vary depending on your terrain. So the steeper the hill, the more your battery voltage is going to go down when, when you're monitoring that. So it's hard to say. Now, on a 48 volt car, you should probably not ever get below 37, 38 volts. I mean, I, I don't see it shouldn't go lower than that because if you do, you got a weak battery. It should stay up pretty close to 48. And the better your battery pack is, the, the closer to 48 it's going to stay. And if we're talking about a 36 volt car, the better your battery pack is, the closer to 36 it's going to stay. But yes, it is going to drop below. There's no doubt about it. On, on some, in some type of hill or any type of terrain where it puts it under stress, it's going to drop below your whatever your full battery pack voltage is. That's just the nature of, of uh, batteries, of lead acid batteries especially. Now lithium batteries, they, they resist that voltage drop much, much better than lead acid does. That's why lithium, one of the reasons lithium is so cool. Okay, you also ask when you put two aug wire on the batteries, from the negative to the controller and the positive to the motor, do you need two aug wire from the motor to the forward and reverse switch? Uh, if, if you're talking about a car with an electrical system that has a mechanical forward and reverse switch, and what I mean by that is you know, a lever, it's a lever that you have to move quite a ways in order to put it in forward and you have to move it quite a ways to go into reverse. If you're talking about that type of electrical system, then the answer is yes, you need to replace those wires with two, with two aug wires also because they used, that means you still have your main power wires going to that forward and reverse switch. You need to replace all of your high power wires with two aug when you, when you do the, the wire switch. Let me just look at Facebook here. In Facebook, we've got Billy Strawn. What's up, Billy? He says, hey, Tim from Oklahoma. Uh, Billy from Oklahoma. Do you recommend a certain forward and reverse switch? I want to get rid of that OEM switch. I'm wanting to put one on the dash. Uh, well, Billy, are we talking about a mechanical forward and reverse switch, or are you talking about just a push button, just a, a push button forward and reverse switch? Because if you have a mechanical forward and reverse switch, it's a little bit more complicated to to put just a push button in there. It can be done. You've got to get some reversing contactors. But if you uh, if you just if you already just have a push button switch, then yeah, that's that's not that's not an issue. It, the one from Club Car would mount there to your car, or the the easy go one that goes in the off of PDS would go into your dash. Uh, so it, that's not a big deal. But if you're wanting to go from a mechanical to a push button. That's where it gets a little bit more complicated, and it, and it, uh, okay, 99 DS. All right, so if you got a 99 DS, then you, you already have a, uh, your, yours is basically the first generation of a push button. Uh, it's going to be a little more complicated. You're going to need to, because a 99 DS, you've got the the round thing on the inside with the two micro switches. Um, Gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get back with you on that, Billy. Uh, why don't you send me an email and I'll have some research done on that because that, that's a, that is a good question. Send me an email. Send an email to support at Golf Cart Garage and put Attention Tim and, uh, and bring this up again and I, I'll revisit this with you. Or you can set up an appointment with Gearheads on Demand. You can click the link in the description and you can talk to me that way because uh, maybe by then I'll have, I'll have done a little research on that. Let's see here. We're going back to the questions for a minute and go back to 13. Let's see. I, Tim, I have a 2012 Club Car Villager 2. I've been leaving my cart plugged into the charger until I use next. When talking to my fellow golfers, they are saying that's bad for the cart and could be dangerous. What is the proper way to recharge my cart? Well, don't listen to your fellow golfers, uh, uh, unless you're asking them about golf, about how to play golf. But the 2012 club car has an onboard computer on it, and that system is designed for you to be able to leave your car on the charger. Now, but what what happens is, if you're just if you're coming back the next day, if you're going to charge your car and you're coming back the next day to play golf, then it doesn't it doesn't really matter because when your charger, when your cart gets completely charged. 
your charger shuts off and it's not doing anything. It's not trickle charging into the cart. It's not doing anything. So if you come back the next day, that didn't hurt anything at all that you left it plugged in. Okay, what the onboard computer also does, let's say you plugged it in to your golf cart and you left and you didn't come back for over two weeks, like or, or three weeks. What it does then, you plug it into your car, you walk away, in 14 days, if the charge cycle does not get, inter get interrupted with an electricity blink or something like that, that charger will come back on and charge your car. So that's the whole purpose of it. And then it'll charge it and then shut off. But it's not doing a trickle charger. It's not doing anything that's harming your cart, you know, by leaving it in there on a 2012. Now, other golf carts and other chargers, you know, it would be, might be a different answer. But on your particular one, it doesn't hurt a thing. Okay, let's see, number 14, it's from Howard. My throttle pedal goes into a box under floor mat and it has a micro switch and gears. What's the part to repair or replace? Okay, we talking about gas or electric? If, if, you, if you're talking about an easy go, it's under the floor mat, like you said, and you have a micro switch and an ITS, what I talked about earlier. There's, that's only two parts that are under the floor mat on an easy go. Now, club car doesn't have anything under the floor mat. Now, so I'm thinking you might, you must be talking about a Yamaha because you said, you said a switch and gears. And I believe that when you open that access panel on a Yamaha, the switch, I know the switch is very readily apparent and then there's a gear connected to the accelerator pedal that you can see it working. So you must be talking about a Yamaha and the only thing that's replaceable in that area on a Yamaha would be that, uh, it's called the pedal stop switch. That's what the, the big switch is, is uh, that's under the floor mat on a Yamaha. Okay, let's see, number 15. This is from Robert. He says, I have a club car precedent. I put a new solenoid speed sensor and an M core. All fuses are good. Just clicking, no go. Well, you have, you've replaced the speed sensor, you've replaced the solenoid, and you've replaced the M core. And the solenoid is clicking, because you're saying it's clicking. That's a good sign, except for the fact that the that means everything's working all the way up to your solenoid, but you're just not getting power out of your controller to go to your motor. So it could be either controller or motor at this point because everything else is in front of that chain of command there. You know, the, the, the solenoid, controller, motor. That's how it goes. Now, the good news is that it would be every time that you're clicking and not moving, your car is actually storing a, a fault code in a precedent that stores fault codes. So club car, a dealer, could plug in their little computer and they could read your fault codes. You know, they would see all your past fault codes in, in your particular situation and that would give them a really good idea of which one it was. They could isolate it a little bit easier that way. And uh, then they could, you know, obviously they're gonna charge you for that, for, for the repair, but it's not really something that you could do yourself, but that would be the easiest way for you to find out more accurately what the, what the issue actually is, knowing that your car is storing those fault codes every time your solenoid click and it didn't take off. Let's see. 16, my battery's down on my cart and we need to move it. Is there some sort of release switch slash lever that would unlock the wheels so we can push it. Not sure of the kind of club cart. It was my dad. It is electric. I remember this question, and it, it actually included a picture of the car, and it was a it was a club car DS. Now, I don't know why you couldn't figure out how to unlock the wheels on a DS, because there's no reason why those wheels should be locked on a club car DS just because your batteries died. So anyway, the only thing you can do is put the, the if it has a run tow switch under the seat, put that switch in tow, that will allow it to freewheel, and then you got to touch the gas pedal in order to unlock the parking brake. You know, if you get if your parking brake is locked, you got to just press on the accelerator pedal with your foot, and the, and the parking brake will unlock. That's all you can do there. But if your wheels are still locked up at that point, then you have another issue. It wasn't just dead batteries. You got something else going on.
number 17 is from Steve. I have Trojan batteries and a Yamaha golf cart. Now, does the watering system transfer over? You're talking about the automatic fill system where it fills all your batteries at the same time, I assume. And it will trans over, it will transfer over as long as you're going from lead acid batteries, golf cart lead acid deep cycle batteries to another brand of golf cart lead acid deep cycle batteries, then yes, it will transfer over. It will transfer over that most likely, unless there's something I don't understand about those watering systems, they 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 just they just screw it to the top of each one of your holes. You remove your existing caps and then you, you just transfer that one over and you just you hook it all back up just exactly the same way it was. I don't really like those by the way. Uh, you, you can use that if you would like, but uh, I don't actually recommend those because uh, you know batteries, especially lead acid batteries, are, are kind of dangerous and that those those can uh, those watering systems can cause an issue that you might not be familiar with because I've, I've seen it happen. I've, I've heard about it happening over the years many times. So that's up to you if you want, to, you want the convenience of filling up your water. See. 17, so let's see, let's go to 18. This is from Peter. Do a pair of heavy duty coil over shocks on the front replace the leaf spring? Okay, the only the only uh, heavy duty coilover shocks that we sell must be the ones that you're talking about and they're, they are for an easy go. Uh, an easy go has leaf springs in the front. Now these heavy duty coilover shocks do not replace the leaf springs. Absolutely not. They only replace the shocks, the, the existing shocks. And what, they're, what they are for is they just, it, it would be for a car that you were planning on heavily modifying and, and adding a lot of weight to. Generally, you only need to add heavy duty springs to the rear. Now, you can, in order to, you know, to, in order to make it uh, capable of handling more weight, you put heavy duty springs in the rear. But if you're gonna put all kinds of stuff on your golf cart, you might need to beef up the suspension in the front also. And when I say beef up the suspension, you're basically just making it even more stiff. It's gonna be, it's gonna be stiff as a, as a brick, and, and, but it will handle a whole lot more weight. So that would, but they do not, they're not designed to replace the leaf spring, no. Let's see here. Jack Methner. I got you on Facebook, Jack. What's up? My 2000 EasyGo TXT does not have a speed sensor on the driver's side of the motor. Where would it be? Or does this model not have one? Uh, 2000 EasyGo could be either one jack you could have a if you have a 2000 dcs then you do have a speed sensor and it would be very obvious on the end of the motor but obviously you do not so that means you have a 2000 series cart it's a 2000 series wound cart uh, there's two types of cars there's cars that have regenerative braking and then there's cars that don't okay your car does not if it does not have a speed sensor on the end of the motor it does not have regenerative braking on a 2000 easy go so you, you can you can quit looking for it because it, it doesn't have one let's see let's go over to YouTube here let's see Roger Gregory is got, got back with me on that wiring question. He says, I have two AUG on everything now except to my mechanical forward and reverse lever. I'm going to work on getting those swapped over. Cool, Roger. Yep, that's what you should do. Otherwise, it's like a, they would call it, if you didn't change those wires, you would have what they call a bottleneck. You'd have an electrical bottleneck. Like you, all your other wires are really good and they're, they're big and they can handle all kinds of current. Then all of a sudden the current gets to a smaller wire. Now it may or may not have ever caused you a problem but it's just a good idea if you're in there and you've got the ability to do it then go ahead and do it change all your power wires to two all all right let's see that looks good that looks good i'll check comments one more time before we get out of here because that's all the regular questions for today uh, don't forget to go to golfcartgarage.com Look for this logo, Extreme Golf Cart Makeover Season 2, because you can enter to win cash and prizes. 
They're doing some really cool stuff. Uh, Dave's got a lot of videos out with a TXT that he's doing some exciting stuff too, but you can also fill out the information and enter to win cash and prizes. You might be, you might be lucky. So look for this logo to get more info on that. Also, if you're interested, if you have some golf cart issues, just remember we offer this GearHeads on demand service here at Golf Cart Garage. I am a big part of that. Uh, you can call up, you can schedule uh, with me, you can schedule a phone call with me, you can schedule a video session with me where I can see what you're pointing at. Just click the link in the description if you're interested in doing that. Uh, that'll take you to the scheduling page. I think we also I think there's also a link on our homepage now for the, the GearHeads On Demand, but you can click the link in the description or you can go to our homepage and click on that link and it'll take you to the scheduling page, shows all the available time slots and uh, pick out your, your time slot that's convenient for you. I get notified automatically, I'll call you at that time. I'll be there, if, even if it's a phone call or even just or a video. All right, I believe that's gonna be it for me this week. We will be back next week. I'm glad to be back on YouTube and Facebook now. Uh, thank everybody in the live chat for showing up. Oh, we, we've got someone else. Let me see, before we get out of here, we got Tom Peters. What's up, Tom? So you got 2011 Easy Go 36 volt, new batteries, only moves real slow, just hardly moving. Where do I start? Okay. Let me ask you a couple of questions, Tom. Does your cart, like when you get on it, does it ever just take off normally and then just drop down to a crawl or is it just stuck at a crawl? But it could, it still would be probably be the same thing. I would be suspicious that your speed sensor, if you've got new batteries and you haven't had any problems, I mean, tell me this, did it run like this before you changed the batteries also? Did it run the same with the old batteries? Did it do this same thing? Because if it's going just barely to a crawl, it's most likely a speed sensor issue. Roger Gregory says, I enjoyed the live chat. Thanks. Well, thank you, Roger, for coming in the chat, man. That's cool. Uh, feel free to come back anytime. Tom Peters says, you just got the cart. Okay, so you you got it, and it's and it's got this issue. You just got it, and it's got this crawling issue. Uh, I, Tom, you might want to set up an appointment with me. You might want to click the description, and we can and I can that way we can uh, we can talk about it further because I've got some questions about it being. Uh, does it have a run toe switch uh, under the seat? If it has a run toe switch, then uh. I know it has a speed sensor if it's got a run toe switch. Okay, it does not have a run toe switch. All right. Well, if it does not have a run toe switch under the seat, that means it's a 2011 series cart. All right. Now, if a series cart is just crawling, it's not going to be a speed sensor issue. It's going to be something else. It could either be your ITS is is messed up, and that's under the floor mat, which I've talked about in this in this video for on a few different questions. Or it could be your controller. I've seen controllers that, that go to like half power, and uh, it, it's not very common, but I have seen it happen. Uh, haven't seen it happen on a 2011 though, so I would be thinking you might be looking at an ITS issue. But I'd need to get a little bit more specific answers to some questions on it though. So if you if you would, why don't you click the link in the description and schedule something with me, and we'll talk about that. Let's see. That looks like it's going to be about it. All right. That's going to be it for this week. We will be back next week. We'll be back on YouTube and Facebook again next week. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for participating in the live chat. The garage is now closed. <laughs>